Sometimes you just gotta make a bite. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Great big one. Ooh, ooh. Mm, this spot's gotta have fish. Ah, I got him. Good one, boy. Good one. Nice fish. <laughs> that did not take a lot. <laughs> the sport of fishing enjoys a unique heritage, steeped in tradition, yet evolving at a frantic pace. An intriguing blend of something old and something new that has transcended the ages for all to enjoy. Classic fishing tactics that trace their roots back to a simpler era seldom go out of style. Often you can enhance their effectiveness by adding new and improved components, making old standby systems even deadlier. And by learning to use traditional systems in untraditional fashion to catch fish like never before. Today, on the edge, we go drop shotting for smallmouth bass using VMC's revolutionary new spin shot hook to eliminate line twist while maximizing the lifelike action and appearance of subtle soft baits. Very few ways that you can present a bait this small in 15 to 25 feet of water. The bass absolutely love it. Then we shift into gear on a trolling bike where the added flash and vibration of spinner harnesses triggers walleyes into striking. David, another bulldog. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Spinner rigs are a phenomenally effective means to catch big walleyes all over the country. You definitely have to put it into your arsenal of tactics. When it comes to fishing, simple yet effective solutions are often best. And that usually boils down to using the correct blend of hook, line, and sinker to make fish bite. This is one of the absolute easiest for most people to adapt. I don't want to say, what's that word, Jared? The no-brainer? <laughs> Great way to catch fish all season long. Closed captioning provided by Fishoflage. Numerous lures enable you to reach bass in deep water. A heavy enough jig, a large build diving crankbait, lures with extreme characteristics that plummet or plunge into the fish zone. When bass are finicky, however, deep water fishing also calls for finesse. And achieving the right combination of light line and small lures really narrows your options for deep water success. This is what the game plan is for today. Al and I are gonna try to put a bunch of fish like this in the boat under what most people would call pretty darn tough conditions. The dog days of summer, pretty calm, sunny, time for a finesse bite, and we have a system that is dynamite for putting big bass in a boat like this. And besides being dynamite, it's what you'd call really easy fishing. It's right here, right there. It's called the spin shot. And we're gonna catch some big small mouths today. What do you think of that one, Al? You know, when you fish small baits in light line, that almost always mean, means clear water. Yeah, you know, if you go to dark, dirty water, presentations like this are nowhere near as effective as some of the more traditional uh, bottom-type baits, such as a, a, a shaky worm, as an example. 
yeah, you know, with a slightly bigger bait. So drop shotting by and large is uh, a, a clear water presentation. Got him? Got him, Al. Yep. Right on the high stuff. Ooh. Ooh, he's coming up. Nice one. Nice, nice fish, one, man. man. Nice one. Nice fish. Those big smallmouths love to get out on this deep structure midsummer. It's late summer right now, August up here. And if you fish smallmouth bass, the later in the year it gets, they have a real tendency to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And when you get conditions like this, they have a tendency to be finicky. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh. And to get them to bite, it's all about finesse. And I tell you what, this little drop shot is one of the most effective ways to catch finicky bass in deep water. There's very few ways that you can present a bait this small in 15 to 25 feet of water, drop shotting, gets it done, and the bass absolutely love it. That's a good fish. Let him go. Oh, beauty. beauty. Let me show you what that beauty brown bass bit here. Look at that. Isn't that a cool little device? That is called the spin shot. If you fish drop shot much, you know that one of the big issues that you have drop shot fishing, especially in deep water, is line twist. Look at this baby right here. It spins right around a little wire shank and it totally eliminates line twist. It gets rid of all that line twist and it's a beautiful little hook for presenting all kinds of different plastic options on it for drop shot fishing. So this one happens to be the Trigger X Pro, but there's so many great little lures you can put on this spin shot to catch lots of big bass. Essentially, any soft plastic can work on a drop shot, yet the shapes, sizes, and colors available today have become very specialized for this technique. Here are some of our go-tos. The minnow is a mainstay. Tubes and leeches are great, and the finesse worm is at the top of my list. Our primary bait today is a Trigger X probe. This bait was specifically designed for drop shotting, and the color lineup is simply amazing. Because fish have such a long time to inspect the bait with this technique, the probe's specialized color and action can make bass bite in the toughest of conditions. Drop shot sinkers are also specially designed for this application. You simply slide the line into the clip, no knots needed. When the sinker gets snagged, the clip on the sinker cuts the line, allowing for minimal line loss. One observation I've seen <laughs> fishing out of the back here, I'm, I'm fishing a lot of fish vertically, and I'm noticing when we get to a spot, our first run, maybe second run through, I'll tell Al, yep, they're, they're here. I got them down, down below the boat. I can drop down and catch those fish. The first pass through almost every time. Second pass through, I'll maybe pick one off, but it really makes a huge difference. I'm putting a GPS mark on, and then we'll back the boat off. So if the fish were in 21, our next passes will maybe make it 24, 25, and then we'll cast short pitches, not long pitches, just a little flip like this. We'll cast to the waypoint. The waypoint is right where my bait landed, and that's right where the school of fish is. And they have a tendency to bite a little bit better away from the boat once you pluck the few out of the school. Bass. Now, <laughs> yeah. Like those other ones. Oh, no, a little bigger. better. A little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah but better than I thought. That fish was pretty shallow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she was pretty shallow. Anybody with her? I don't see any other customers. No, see nobody with her. You know, in most cases, you know, when you're drop shotting like this, you're using a light line. I have six pound test. Uh, Six pound test, 100% suffix fluorocarbon on this rod. Jeremy's fishing with 832. You know, and the reason for that is you're fishing for uh, uh, as light as four, sometimes 
generally six or eight, and once in a while it goes heavy as ten. Look at that, how they're always fucked. And it spins you right in the top of the mouth, just the way they should be fucked. So Al's rigged up with fluorocarbon, but when it comes to spinning gear, I'm so comfortable with braid, it's almost all I fish. And braided line, like the Suffix 832, is a great line, I feel, for this application. But you got to have a fluorocarbon leader. I'm running a six-pound fluoro leader off of this thing, and I've got the high-vis version on here. And the reason I like that, a lot of times I'm just shaking that line and there's a little slack in it, so I'm not always feeling the bait, but I can see a lot of times when I get bit, the line will just tick and I can lift up and bingo, they're on it. You don't need to set the hook with the braid either. That's the other, the other deal. You'll miss a lot of fish. If you get picked up by a bass when you're fishing braid like this, you don't set the hook like you're fishing a jig. All it is is you feel the fish, you let the rod slightly load, reel a couple times fast, and you got them every time. No, she's better, way better one. Uh, she came alive for you? Yeah, yeah, she came alive good. Yeah, way better fish. Wow, look at that one. Yeah, that's a good one. This is one of the absolute easiest for most people to adapt. I don't want to say, what's that word, Jerry? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> All you got to do is get it on the bottom, keep it there, you know, and you're going to start to catch some fish. But there's a lot, a lot of little nuances like we went over in today's show that'll help jack up the odds of, of drop shot to put more fish in a boat. Not only smallmouth like this, but largemouth and spots too. Great way to catch fish all season long. Hey, for more detailed information or to purchase any products you've seen on this show, go to lindermedia.com. Sometimes, slow, precise tactics are required to tempt and tease fish into biting. At others, adding a bit of speed to expand coverage and trigger strikes is exactly what the doctor ordered. Especially in midsummer, when forage is abundant and you want your lures or baits to stand out in the crowd. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> Look at that one. That's, that, <laughs> that's what I call an opener. <laughs> Look at that guy First there. Of the day. That's a real one there. And they can only get bigger than that one. <laughs> that's a nice fish. And as you can see, he nailed a spinner rig going about 1.2 miles an hour. We had a night crawler dressed on there. And it's a perfect way to cover water a little quicker than a, than a uh, live bait rig. Not quite as fast as a crankbait. Ooh. And it's a great presentation option for not only catching, but locating walleyes. And when you're on a monster lake like this one, you've got to do a lot of looking before you can zero in and catch a fish. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a, that's, boy, you get a number of those boys. Come here, buddy. There we go. One thing that's sort of interesting is the way we're fishing here and it's really true when you're trolling like this and you're trying to cover these big massive flats when you look at my map here you can see this point and this point is actually quite large this is probably four or five blocks long you can actually see our plot trail how the boat is moving along but you can see how I've actually combed it these couple of different GPS coordinates are where we caught a couple of fish I dropped some uh, coordinates down but it enables you to really see and actually when you're fishing a big structure like this, the water that you fished and more importantly, the water you haven't covered yet. I got him, James. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it feels decent. You know what, I just made a corner really slow down there. That seemed like that may, you know, some of these fish. I'll get out of your way here, hang on. Ha! Huh. Oh. I don't know, they all seem to be pretty nice out here. Let's see. Oh boy, whoa. That fish was a little bit shallower. I was up on the top of the reef there. 23, 24, nice one. Boy, nice one. There you go. Dig in. Deep water Walters. Another nice one. Every one of them. I mean, we haven't caught, caught really a small one today, really. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, come here. I'm gonna get a we're up. <laughs> there you go. How do you like that net job? It was well, a little, a little, a little soft which, at was first. Was it the first, the second, or the third net job? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all nice fish. Very good. I'm a spinner. 
You know, there's a lot of different ways to rig spinners. Let's take a look at a few of them. Walleye anglers use a variety of sinkers to troll spinners, matching their components to the situation at hand. Reservoir anglers typically use snag-resistant bottom bouncers whose wire legs crawl up, down, and over rocks and sand with few, if any, snags. They're also great for fishing rocky reefs and Canadian waters. Here on Millax Lake, walleye anglers often use three-way rigs to present spinners two to three feet above the soft bottom of the mid-lake mudflats making sure the spinners remain visible well above the gooey bottom. Today, our electronics revealed that walleyes were holding closer to the bottom, so we rigged up VMC switched bottom bouncers to position our spinners and baits just above the bottom. Had we been fishing around weeds or timber, we'd probably switch to bullet sinkers, which slide more easily between stalks and sticks without snagging. In effect, spinners work just about everywhere that walleye swim if you rig them properly with the correct sinker style for the conditions. We may even have to, to kick the big tiller in reverse and you know you got one. <laughs> so, you know, rods and reels are an important aspect of any fishing situations and that, and that really goes for spinner fishing. You know, we've been working with the Quantum folks over the last couple of years and we've put together a series of rods. These are uh, our technique specific rods and it's the angling edge branded rods but what these rods are this particular rod happens to be a good bottom bouncer rod but it's also a good trolling rod for crankbaits for walleyes this exact same rod you know what i also like it for carolina rigging bass so it has a, a number of different applications and when you buy one of these rods it actually on the hang tang it really identifies a, what our rod preference and usage or presentation strategy with that rod is. That's another big whopper, David, nice I'm one. telling nice, you. Nice How do you like the size of these guys? That's a very look nice average, James. Oh, look at that. Oh, a very close call. You know, over the last couple of years, I am really sold with uh, Trigger X, these uh, little minnows that can be uh, night crawlers. There are a variety of different profiles, but a lot of people are uh, so tied to live bait and live bait is an important aspect of, of walleye fishing for many different fishing situations but the thing is if you're not using artificials you definitely have to experiment with it because in a lot of different cases it works it really works tremendously we'll get her back you know when you look at uh, spinner componentry it's sort of interesting over the last couple of years uh, how it's changed and the reason being what I mean how it's changed, it's made it simpler. You know, a spinner rig is actually quite complex. You have a sinker, three-way rig, bottom bouncer, and blades. But the thing is, with today's uh, systems, like this VMC uh, Hydroflow uh, spinner system, what I have is I have interchangeable blades. I can change blades instantaneously. Uh, secondly, is even the sinker systems. Like if you switch at sinkers, it actually has a quick change uh, mechanism in there, and I can change weight instantaneously and it just makes it a lot easier you know you look at the rigging options and you can see how I have my spinner rigs on these little uh, uh, snelling device here I can roll it on roll it off if I use snells they can dip various colors and it just made it a lot a lot simpler you know where you don't you're not all these weird pieces of different stuff floating all over it's a lot more condensed uh, you know easier system to use okay you know, a lot of walleye anglers in the North Country have uh, turned to big tiller engines like this EFI 90, and for a number of different reasons. So, uh, number one, it actually, without a council, you have a lot more room in the boat. You know, for guides up here, they can actually position three people up in the boat and move around comfortably. The other thing is boat control. Boat control is a huge, huge thing, and the thing is, is well, like on this big tiller, I have a, an RPM speed control on here. I can adjust my uh, RPM. I, what I've done, because we're fishing spinners and I'm fishing relatively slow, I've actually brought my RPMs as slow as possible. The other thing that it really affords you is the ability to quickly turn, turn the boat. I can turn on a dime. I can really follow really sharp uh, contours, you know, if you're fishing a really sharp drop off. And actually today with these big killers, this boat runs really good. I mean, this boat runs, you know, almost 45 miles an hour. It moves good. You know, we've been fishing a, a number of different points, but the thing is, one of the biggest things is your initial search process. And what we're doing, you know, today, we, you know, electronics is, is amazing tools. Mapping programs like I have in my Hummingbird 998 here, 
you, know, you get out on a big waters like this and I can drive out to those key points instantaneously. And what we're, we've been doing is we'll drive up to a point, drive around the key areas for a time before we even fish. That's one of the biggest things. Before we start fishing, we're gonna go examine that spot. If we don't see any fish, we actually move to the next spot. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty fast process to cover water. Oh man, look at that guy there. Ooh, man, she's a big, big one. That is a, that is a tank. <laughs> I Ooh. guarantee you. Oh, big fish. No question about it. Spinner rigs are phenomenally effective means to catch big walleyes all over the country. You definitely have to put it into your arsenal of tactics. Live bait isn't your only option for catching walleyes. Jigs, soft baits, and hard body baits are deadly for triggering big fish to strike. Break tradition with Walleye Artificial Intelligence, part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Hey, I got a quiz for you. Who said these words? When solutions are simple, God is at work. Again, when solutions are simple, God is at work. Albert Einstein, a quote from Albert Einstein. Pretty smart man, ain't he? Hey, you want some words of encouragement today? I'm sure we all do. It's in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And this is, that quote reminded me of this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Food for thought for the week. Hey, from all of us at the edge, have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, check us out at anglingedge.com, Facebook, or the YouTube channel. Hey, thanks for watching.